All right, we are live. We are live. Post to others. Okay. Share. Okay. All right, y'all. I'm going to be real quick with this because uh, everyone in the house is asleep, but I hear them stirring. They're about to wake up. So I need to make this quick. Okay. Now I'm going to be making homemade. I'm going to be making Lead Farmers 73. Lead Farmer 73. He's a YouTuber. He's amazing. Check out his channel. I'm going to be making his version of homemade apple cider vinegar. I watch so many videos and his version is the only one that I've seen and it looks really, really quick. So I'm going to try that out. So this is what you need. Okay. Don't worry about all the measurements. It's really what you feel like doing, okay? I know that's going to be unnerving for people because they need specifics, but just roll with me. So this is what you're going to need. Okay, here we go. All right. We're making apple cider vinegar. We need some apples. Now, I got some little itty-bitty uh, jawbreaker size apples from the store and then some medium size, okay? So I'm using, I'm going to use about four. So it looks like four apples. It's four small, two big apples, okay? You're going to need apples. You're going to need some water. Don't worry about how much just yet, okay? You'll know when, you, when you'll know. Trust me. And you're going to need sugar, okay? That's it. Apples, sugar, and water. Those are your three ingredients, okay? Just to start. Sugar, I'm just using what's in the house, okay? I didn't go out to the store to buy anything. Everything you see is in the house. Those are the ingredients. Let me just move this up so I can stop bending over. Now, you're also going to need some kind of cloth covering for the container that you're going to put everything in, okay? So I just took, I, I, I cut up shirts and pajamas, a SpongeBob, and I use that. So you can use, don't use cheesecloth. Uh, from what I've been told, um, the weaving is not that tight. So fruit flies can get through or lay eggs. So you don't want to do that. So just a, just a t-shirt, you know, put it over and you'll put a rubber band over that. So for your materials, container, some type of covering cloth, something that's breathable. Don't put a fleece blanket over it and a rubber band. All right. So let's get going. All right. Now the way that lid does it, he puts the apples in the blender. If you don't have a blender, no problem. You're just going to get a knife and a cutting board and chop those apples up as finely as you can, okay? Other videos, they cut them in chunks. We're not doing the other videos. We're doing Led's version. So I'm going I'm to do it exactly. It's just like when you watch, when, you, um, when you're when you looking at a recipe online, like I go to all recipes, and it's a very popular recipe. But when you start reading the reviews, the person then made like 20 changes to the recipe. And it's like, oh, and it's fabulous. But it's a totally different recipe. So I, I'm the person, I do everything exactly as the original poster of the recipe did. And then if it doesn't taste right, then I make changes, okay? So blender. I'm going to throw the apples in here. Well, let me put some water in. Now it looks like I have... Well, let me put it in here so you can see. For those of you who need to know, this is about, let's see, almost three cups of water. All right, almost three cups of water. Let me bring you guys closer. Okay, three cups of water. And I'm just gonna plop them in. Now you can't do this with every kind of blender on the market. I have a body mix, so just be mindful. I know Led, I think he had an Oster. Uh, blender, O-S-T-E-R, and it chopped up the apples just fine. So you should be fine with that. Just put your apples in, okay? I'm going to do just two at a time. Turn it on. And there we go. Oh, that went through it like butter. Put some more in. All right. Okay. The mine's looking a little watery. Now remember I had about almost three cups of water and four little baby apples. I'm gonna add the rest of these apples. So basically uh, six small apples. And don't do nothing to the apples. The stem, the little bottom booty part, the core, the seeds, all of that. And don't worry about the, the thing, the, the saying about the arsenic or the cyanide and the apple seeds. You need a whole bunch of that. I mean, you need like 
hundreds and hundreds of them to do that. All right. Wait. Oh, I turned everything off. Okay. We're almost done. Who's in here? Hey, coffee and cream. Hey, Melissa. Okay, see, one little apple is kind of stuck on the bottom. All right. Now, it doesn't have to be like super blended, like applesauce, but that's what he did, so that's what I'm doing. All right, so that's good enough. All right, so. Y'all, I'm telling you, this is, once you make this, you're never going to buy apple cider vinegar again. Okay, so all you do now is, are you chopping apples with me, Melinthia? All right, H-Town in the house. I knew you would represent. All right, so here we go. We're going to pour the apple solution sauce. Oh, I got a big old chunk in there. All right, let me chop that one up again. Come on, body mix. I don't like surprises like that. I didn't turn it all the way up. All right. All right, I think that's fine. All right, so we're going to pour everything in here. Now, this container, I actually had some lentils in here. Let's see, I just put them in the bag right here. Washed it out and make sure the, the container that you're using is clean, okay? Get the last little bit in here. Okay, set this aside so I can wash it. All right, <laughs> let me just chair over here so I can sit down for a minute. So I sat down. All right. Now, I actually want a little bit more cider vinegar. You know, see how it's way down here? I want it up to here. Where's my cup? Oh, so I'll go get you some more water. Now they say use um, purified water. I'm using water for my like cooler, the water cooler thing. But in all honesty, and I don't know the science behind this, it's vinegar and bacteria and all the kind of science chemistry stuff going on. I would think no matter what kind of water you use, it's going to get eat up, chopped up, ethered up <laughs> through the process. So it is what it is. Make your own call. Hold on. Let me hide you for a second. Hey, Mona. Okay. So we're going to pour it, the water in the container until we get to like the little indention, like the little lip before you get to like the little lip part. Okay. That might be a little bit too much. Oh, well, I'm not going to pour it out. We're going to see. This is science. Oh, maybe I maybe I did pour too much. I need to pour some sugar in here. Okay, let me, that's okay. Now, originally, originally I was going to use my mason jars, like the ones. So if you can, um, or if you just like to have mason jars to store your um, food, you know, uh, dried foods, candies, whatever, eventually you're going to get some that have cracks. Don't throw them out. These will be great for fermenting your foods in, so or to keep your dried goods in. So I'm just gonna pour this in right here. So I'm gonna make another batch. I'm gonna do a pineapple batch after this. So, okay, a little messy, that's okay. Now, you see that? So this is where my apple solution is right here, okay? I'm gonna take a cup of sugar. Now, I got this big old, I'm going to get you sucker size sugar. That's the uh, Demerara sugar. I don't have, some people use white sugar, some people use brown sugar, all kinds of sugar. I was going to use confection sugar because I'm trying to get rid of it, but I said, let me just use some of this kind of sugar. So I'm using one cup. That's what Led used, okay? I'm making my recipe exactly like his. He used brown sugar, and he had a nice little song the brown sugar D'Angelo song to go with it. He's so entertaining. All right, so I got my sugar in here. Next thing you're gonna do, oh, part of the materials that you need, you want a wooden spoon. You don't want to use metal. I do know from an old chemistry class, whenever you're mixing some kind of solution, you don't wanna use metal. Somehow it contaminates it or makes a reaction that you don't want. So you're just gonna get your wooden spoon or a silicone spoon or even a plastic spoon, anything but metal. And then you're just going to stir it. 
keep stirring until the sugar dissolves. Just stir. You don't, you don't have to do too much because it, you know, it'll take care of itself. Tap that spoon. Set it down. You just made apple cider vinegar. That's it. That took all of what? Four minutes, because I couldn't get the apples all the way period up. Now, if you're hand chopping, that's where the bulk of your work's gonna go. It's just chopping up your apples, but that's it. And let me tell you, from people that I've seen that done it that way, the chunks are really big, so you don't have to do it super, super finely. In my mind, the smaller it is, the easier it is to break down because I'm a gardener and I know when I put food in the compost, I chop it up finely because it's going to disintegrate and decompose in the ground faster than big old huge asteroid sized chunks. That's it. Take your little cloth, just put it on top now. I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe. Wipe the, uh, especially if you pour it, it did not fall on the ground, fell on the chair. If you poured it because you didn't, you had too much, just wipe the rim. Like if you can, wipe the, the rim. I'm not gonna mess with the inside. And then put your cloth over, okay? Take your rubber band and now this rubber band, I originally was gonna use this jar, so I had this size and width rubber band. Um, Let uses the really thick ones and then he turns it twice, but his was his rubber band was a little bit longer. Um, I couldn't get, I didn't have the strength to get this around twice, so I'm just gonna use this one. Why well, not use this one? Okay, just get that. Oh, that's not bad. All right, just put it on. Y'all see, we'll do it again. So maybe start from the front. Put it up, down to the back. Do one side. Pull it down. Like how you know you tuck, tuck it in your shirt or your skirt or something like that. And then let it go on the other side. Straighten it up. How you straighten up your shirt after you even tucked it in because you're getting ready to go to school or somewhere. Don't worry about it. The rubber band's all twisted unless you're a perfectionist. And then if you have a band, if you're using, oh, I don't have a band because I changed my um container but if you do have a mason jar you can let me show you you can just so you see you can put the rubber band rubber band over like this like so pull it down straighten it up and then put the band on top and it screws boom nice and tight and you got the extra added protection okay then Get a piece of tape or whatever you're using. See, I, I was prepared to use this, and then I was like, no, I'm, I'm going to need a bigger container because uh, this is a quart size, and I don't know what size this is. I'll have to um, – that looks like a half gallon, huh? So anyway, just label – just write apple cider vinegar or ACV vinegar the date, and if you want to put the kind of apples that you use, that's fine. I use Gala apples, and – or I think they were – no, I think they were um, – pink ladies. I don't remember. And that's it. Keep this in somewhere like a pantry or a cabinet for um, 30 days. Let's says a month. Okay. And then check on it. Okay. Um, that's it. Now, some people say you can stir it like every couple of weeks. That's up to you. Led said, <laughs> he needs to coin that. Led said, <laughs> leave it alone. Set it there. You know, and, you know, just eyeball and make sure everything's, you know, cool and, and, and breezy. And um, you have your apple cider vinegar, okay? So I'm going to make some pineapple vinegar and then maybe some blueberry vinegar. Not a, There's a rabbit hole of all kinds of things that you can make. So I'm really excited about that. And in 30 days, I'm going to come back and show you what it looks like. And if I see anything changing, I'll just make updates throughout the 30 day process so you can see. And that's it. Listen, where's my, uh, hold on. I was gonna run and get my uh, Bragg's big apple cider vinegar because that sucker is really expensive and the prices keep going up and up. And I use apple cider vinegar. Let me show you. I use apple cider, I'm gonna make another video on what I use for apple cider vinegar. Sometimes I use it in my hair. 
but you see all these cups? I used to be so annoyed at my husband because he would go to Costco and buy these desserts that come in this uh, cup. And we would have, you see how many I have, and I've thrown away a lot. And then I was like, you know what? When you do your apple cider vinegar shots, this is perfect. So, and this is the other one. The like little desserts that come in these cups. So in the morning, I get pineapple juice, apple cider vinegar. This is Bragg's. And look, it's almost the same color already. But eventually the mother is gonna settle on the bottom and it should look clear like this. So I'm really excited to see that. But I take my little shot and boom. I also, um, now it's very expensive. I usually use distilled vinegar, but clean your dishwasher every month and your washing machine every month with vinegar, okay? So vinegar has so many wonderful uses. So I'm gonna make a video on why you should make homemade um, apple cider vinegar and the uses for it. So y'all have any questions? I'm gonna get out of here before my kids. Um, two of my kids have belt testing in karate today. So that's gonna be a special day for them. Well, for them, they're going to want some special snacks. And then we got football coming up, the Rams and the 49ers. Hey, Mari. See, Melinthia, is light brown sugar okay? Girl, listen, you use any kind of sugar you have. I have, I guess this would be considered light brown sugar. Because this is not like, I don't have the packed, the packed brown sugar. This is what I have. Hold on, you can't really see that. That's what I'm using. You see how big? These are big granulars. This is the kind of sugar that Starbucks puts on top of their um, muffins. It's that big kind of, that decorative kind of sugar. So the whole point is the sugar is just a function. It's like a driver for the bacteria, for the bacteria to eat. I don't know if some of you bake bread, you know, yeast is like that driver. So I'm assuming the sugar is the driver for this. So, so long as it's that sweet in form, whether it's white sugar, brown sugar, uh, just cane sugar, whatever kind of sugar, but try it out and see because you don't know. But I, I'm thinking it's gonna be the same, um, the same outcome because it's still sugar. It's just a, a different variety of sugar. Hey, Black Queen. See, what do you use all of those types of vinegars for? Good question. So for apple cider vinegar, now I've never made or had pineapple vinegar or blueberry vinegar or all the other kind of vinegar, vinegar but for apple uh, cider vinegar for health issues, uh, number one, it helps to keep your belly fat down. Like you take that, like a tea, I take a tablespoon I actually, I'm a G, I take two tablespoons in the morning, but you know, someone starting out might take one tablespoon in the morning and then one tablespoon at night. It helps to um, regulate the gut bacteria, the bacteria in your gut, the flora in your gut. Um, it's good for your hair. It's almost like a clarifying uh, shampoo. It doesn't strip your hair and make it all dry. You don't have a funky vinegar smell in your hair. Um, back in the day, uh, Grandma, Mima, uh, aunties, they use what's called kitchen beauty. Avocados, eggs, cider vinegar, or vinegar, all kinds of things for their hair, for their body, or for their skin. And apple cider, apple cider ACV is another thing to use. And, um, and it's wonderful. So you can, there are so many uses for the vinegar, but the main one for me is, oh, and then you can also bake and cook with it. A lot of things call for vinegar. If um, if you guys use a lot of the Bragg stuff, like the amino acids, I have a cookbook that uses a lot of Bragg stuff. And um, it uses a, a lot of recipes call for apple cider vinegar. So um, it's really a great investment. Now that I know I can make it cheaply, I can step my cleaning game up because usually I just use for cleaning, I use distilled white vinegar. Costs like 80 cents, a dollar, or something like that for this big old jug, okay? For a big gallon jug. But now that I can use old rotten apples, um, man, I was looking at all kinds of things you can make with the vinegar. 
and you can clean with it. So um, instead of using the, the distilled vinegar, which is someone told me that the distilled vinegar is almost like this, but it's to totally stripped out, almost like bleached flour versus whole wheat flour. That's just my analogy. I could be wrong, but that's what I'm thinking. So you can just now use a better quality. Like I would never pour this in my dishwasher or my washing machine to clean because it's too expensive. But now that I can make it on the cheap, now I can, instead of using regular uh, lead, uh, gas in your car, you can use a premium. So that's something to think about. Okay. So, um, but don't worry, I'm going to be doing some more research on this. Um, this is, this is huge for me. This is a game changer. This is really going to save a lot of money. After the 30 days, do you drain the juice or just use it right out the jar? Baby, look, this is the first time I ever made this, but, um, for what Led said, Led says, um, okay, because We've, um, well, I basically pureed, pureed the apples. I don't really have to do a lot of draining. I don't have the big chunks of apples, but in the videos I did see of um, other um, people making the apple cider vinegar with apple chunks, they did strain it like with a cheesecloth so they can get all the juice out. And then, um, but they make sure they left the mother in there and and then they just discard. I don't know what they did with the apples. And none of them ever said what they did with the apples. I thought that was really interesting. And only one video showed the process of how, after so many weeks, what they did. A lot of people didn't show that. I thought that was pretty curious. But one lady did. And she just squeezed the apples out, squeezed the juice like back into the jar, um, strained, strained everything. Apples are in the cloth, say like a cheesecloth or maybe even a t-shirt, squeeze to get all the excess vinegar out and then discard it or maybe put it in your compost pile or something. And then you have your, your vinegar, but make sure you're not discarding the mother. It looked kind of gelatinous um, from what I saw in the videos. Um, so I don't know if that broke down further because when you get the bottle like from Bragg's, it's like brown and, you know flowy like in one video it was like it looked like a, a gelatinous round glob but just look for and it should be obvious so just look for something glob like that's the mother you don't want to get rid of the mother because that's that that's that's the mother you can't get rid of your mama you can't put her in a nursing home it's your mama so you want to keep them you want to keep the mother um so um and then to use it right out of the jar well it depends on like what I'm going to do once this is ready to go that old Bragg's uh, jar, I mean, container that I have, I'm just gonna put a funnel right here and just pour this. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all, you can't see, hold on. So I'm gonna put a funnel here and I'm gonna pour this through the funnel and just, re not this one, but my Bragg's one and just keep refilling it. No, no need to buy anything. I'm just gonna keep refilling it and, um, and then just use it from here. And then what I do, I always put a smaller container of the vinegar in like mason jars. And I keep here because I use it every day. But this is like the source that I get it from. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to make it any, any kind of fancy. I'm just minimum. I don't want, I don't need no extra things to learn and all that kind of stuff. I need to go. I need the information and I need to go on with my life. I can't believe how easy this, I know, Paige, you know how, let me Google, you know how expensive apple cider vinegar is? And, you know, everyone's saying that this year things are going to go up in price by 30%. Apple cider vinegar. Brags. Okay. So, okay. So for... I think it's this size, maybe slightly bigger. Target, it's $5.99. Uh, let's see. Oh, show me the, is it a gallon? Yeah, gallon size. Now I know where I go, because you know where I live, everything is unbelievably expensive. Look at this. Look at this. See if y'all can see this. Let me pull it up. For a gallon size, that has really gone up. Hold on, show, show you my zip code. 
All right, let me see. Get just enough. Look at that. $20. $20. And I know that's Instacart, but take a dollar or two off if you go into the store to get it. That's hella expensive. I ain't paying $20 anymore. Does it need to uh, be set in the dark for the month? Uh, yes. So you don't want it on your windowsill, you know, in your kitchen, on the counter. No. So put it in the cabinet. You know, put it where you keep, you know, your uh, your non-perishables, okay? Just number one, so it can't be disturbed because you remember it's it's liquid with no real top, okay? So you don't want, you know, you or someone else knocking it over, one. And um, two, you know, you just, um, you just want to out of sight, out of mind. You know, someone like, oh, what is this? And they're looking and trying to see. Yeah, just keep it in the cabinet, you know, under the sink or where you keep, you know, your rest, you know, your box foods, just somewhere that's not going to be disturbed and there's not direct light. Okay, you should be fine. Let's see. This is great. I need to plant an apple tree ASAP. <laughs> Listen, I bought two apple trees uh, yesterday. I, I think I was talking about that last night on my live. I bought a Fuji tree and I bought a Honeycrisp. I'm I'm gonna go back today because they had, a, if it's still there, they had a dwarf Fuji tree. And I'm like a dwarf one, it only gets six feet high so I can keep it in a container. So um, so right now what I'm trying to do for all my fruit trees, I have like 16 or 17 of them and I don't have enough space, but, some, but I buy two of each because one I, I need in the ground and the other I need in the container. So like if people are gonna, come steal stuff out my backyard, at least on my upper floor where I have my other garden, I can have food up there that I know nobody can hop over the fence and steal. So there you go. But yes, um, but I went to Lowe's and they had um, in my area, area, the trees were $26. So, and I know it fluctuates. Some of them were $35, but the Fuji, um, the, the dwarf ones were $24. And then I got the regular one, which was $32. But a lot of their uh, hybrids, the grafted ones where you have like three or four varieties on one tree, they were $24. So uh, listen, survivalists, don't worry about, oh, it's in geo is manufactured. Everything you eat is nothing that was around back in the day, unless you're eating everything heirloom. <laughs> You're eating things that were created at an extension college, um, grafted by scientists, whatever. A lot of things that grow in your area, more than likely, was grafted for your area to withstand pests or the weather, okay? So you could grow it in your area. So just be mindful of that, okay? Um, don't be bougie right now. You, you really need to start getting your preps up, start getting things slowly, and, and then also learning ways how you can make things yourself so you can be self-sufficient, okay? Um, any other questions? I need to put this on my other channel. I like that all these homeschoolers are here for, for the learning. I want to go grab some seeds. I'm a newbie. What should I plant in the ground in Texas right now? That's easy for practice. You're in Houston. Um, what do you like to eat? People ask me that a lot. Um, what... If you're growing it and you don't eat it, then what's the point? You know, you're taking up space. That's your time and energy. So grow what you eat. I say start with the lettuce, okay? One, it's healthy. Two, it grows really, really fast. And three, you can grow it on your windowsill. You can grow it in the backyard or you can have a little uh, pot of it, you know, on the floor, I mean, on the table. I mean, lettuce is pretty forgiving. So, um and that's something you can put on everything, your sandwiches, your salads, things like that. Um, so I would start with that. If you're just wanting to just, no, you can't just be trying things just for kicks. You really need to start getting self-sufficient. So think of the foods that you always eat. If you're always eating tomatoes, go put some tomato seeds in the ground, okay? So think of things that the majority of people in your house eat. If you're the only one that loves tomatoes and nobody else does, you know, it's going to be hard trying to get them to eat those 
people to eat those potato those tomatoes. So start with start with what you and everyone in your house likes to eat. I say lettuce because you know lettuce could be put on other kinds of food and it's kind of like the least offensive vegetable. You know, people always say on a, on a sandwich or a hamburger, oh, I want tomatoes. I don't want pickles. Um, I don't really hear people say I don't want lettuce. I mean, sure, but it's still lettuce. So you can use lettuce to make wraps. You know, you can put, you know, chopped meat or rice, you know, whatever, whatever, something seasoned, roll it up, got a wrap. Okay. So lots of things that you can do with lettuce where you can use it for um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can put lettuce in a uh, in a smoothie. Okay. So especially if you're talking about like uh, bib lettuce, butter lettuce, um, romaine lettuce, definitely romaine lettuce, then you got a powerhouse. You got something for breakfast. You have something for lunch with the lettuce wraps. Um, romaine is, is sturdy. The butter lettuce is hella expensive, but it's very sturdy. So you can definitely use butter lettuce or bib, B-I-B-B -B lettuce to make wraps for breakfast. I mean, for lunch, and um or cups like lettuce cups and then for dinner you can make lettuce cups do the wraps for breakfast for lunch you know put your little cooked meats or you know salsa or whatever like you would a taco and then for dinner you can put it on a hamburger you can make it as a salad so i'm like lettuce to me is multi-purpose in the garden you can use that for so much stuff so that's just me and there's so many varieties of it you can grow three different varieties um doesn't take up a lot of space and then if you want to, you get one packet of seeds, you got so many seeds in there. They're very, very tiny, like the size of an atom. <laughs> you can't even see it. They're so tiny. And then you just like plant, if you want to have a continuous supply of like nice fresh ones, then plant like every seven to 10 days. That's called successive planting. So you always have a continuous new crop of um, whatever you're planting. So those are just some things to consider. Um, Houston, you get that heat, you get that humidity. Lettuce will bolt. So uh, I recommend putting the lettuce on the north side of the house where you get the most shade. The south side is where you get the most sun and heat. So it'll just wilt. Consider getting like a, a shade cloth to put over the lettuce. So it helps with the heat from the sun, actually. Um, and if that doesn't work, if you don't have the space outside, then grow it in the house. I, took, I have a video where, um, I think it's on my messy channel, the messy homesteader channel, where I show you um, kitchen scraps. You just put in water on the windowsill. I do have videos of growing lettuce. I just have to, I mean, uh, uh, pictures. I think I have them on my other um, Instagram channel. And you just put it in a, a cup with a little bit of water and it'll grow back. So lettuce is your biggest bang for your buck, okay? All right, and I'm going to get out of here because it's 10 o'clock and I got to get the boys ready for their belt testing. Um, we eat all vegetables. Then you're per perfect. So whatever they like to eat and you like to eat, eat, grow that. Definitely start with lettuce. You get the biggest bang for your buck. And then if you want something fun for your kids, you know, radishes, um, they grow super fast, like 20, 30 days in a month, you'll have something. Um, and, and it's fun. That gets them excited about it. Um yeah, so uh, herbs, definitely herbs. They grow fast. You can grow them on the windowsill, cilantro, basil. Um, I've never grown oregano on my uh, windowsill because basil and cilantro, they're a little bit more finicky. So I grow them outside, but I also grow them on the, um, the, uh, the windowsill. So, so guys, this has been great. Um, I'm going to start doing more of these kinds of videos and I might just leave some on this channel if you want to watch it you can if not no no harm no foul but definitely on my other channel um I will be doing more of this and I'm actually going to upload this video to the other channel since YouTube said I couldn't go live even though I did uh do the 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 work to where I had to wait for 24 hours to be approved and that was like two months ago so it is what it is all right. Thanks for this. It was very helpful. Love the Homestead Lives. Thanks again. Thank you guys for coming by. This is my first ever uh, Messy Homesteader Live on via Homeschool Knockout. So I appreciate you guys stopping by on a Sunday morning where you could be anywhere else. And I appreciate that. So I will be updating on this so you guys can see and then you can decide for yourself if that's something you want to do. And then I'm going to be doing like a little taste test between the $20 version 
And how much did that bag of apples cost me? I think $3.99. The sugar. Well, look, there were more apples in that bag. So it didn't really cost me $3.99. But if I use all the apples, let's say $3.99, the bag of sugar. Uh, I don't even remember what I paid for that. But if you got some cheap sugar from the, uh, the dollar store, that's 99 cents. You can get apples for 99 cents. So $2. And then water's well, supposed to be free. So all you need to do is just get your materials. Get you an old shirt. That's free. You're not buying anything else. Find you a container. I would recommend doing this in glass. I know that all this vinegar that you buy, a lot of it comes, like the bigger jugs come in plastic. So apparently it's okay to have vinegar in plastic. But... During the fermenting process, I don't know. I know with the end product, it's okay because the apple cider vinegar that I buy, this is not the apple cider vinegar one, but that, that one comes in plastic as well. So if all you have is plastic, get started. Use the plastic. Use what you have, okay? Ain't nothing going to happen to you. <laughs> just use it. Just watch it, okay? All right, guys. Thank you for hanging out with me. Um, if you found this to be of some value, please put a like on the channel as you leave. And I will see you guys next week with another something something. All right. Love you guys. Bye-bye.